Hello everyone, welcome. We're live. It's me, Phil, in the Digital DJ Tip Studio with your Thursday Q&A live, which means an hour of talking DJing. We are the leading online DJ school. We are the home of Jazzy Jeff and James Hype and DJ Angelo and Layback Luke and lots of other people. Our whole job here is to help you become better DJs and better DJ producers. Uh, and I'd like you to ask questions. So we should be live, because we never know for sure, uh, on all of our channels, Global DJ Network and Student Hub for students only. Also inside our Facebook page, we're live on our YouTube channel and on Twitch today. So wherever you're watching us, settle back, lock your door, turn your phone off, tell people you're unavailable for the next hour and join us to talk DJing. Uh, and of course, the most important thing about these live shows is you. And I've got all your comments coming in live here on my screen. So please do ask questions wherever you may be uh, watching this. Uh, and that's what we're here to do. We're here to answer them. So the equipment we've got here today, you saw it in the opening shot. We've got set up the uh, the CDJ 3000s uh, and the reason for this is that we're in the middle of recording some free uh, training which is going to be coming very soon on the CDJ 3000s. So got these set up so if you're interested in asking any questions about the CDJ 3000s then you may do so. Or also we have got uh, Recordbox software because of course Recordbox software uh, is what you use with the CDJ 3000s. So if you're a Recordbox user uh, you could ask questions about that and we've got that here. We can actually demo that live for you as well. Uh, but it doesn't have to be questions about either of those things, literally whatever it is. We've got all the stuff on the screens behind us. We've got all kinds of DJ controllers down here. There's a little Rev 1 that we've been playing with this week as well. Um, so look, I'm surrounded by DJ tech. I've got all the software uh, and hopefully all the info and all the advice to help you become a better DJ or DJ producer, which is what this is all about. So some early hellos. Hi to uh, um, Facebook users. You must be in one of our groups. Just says howdy. Hello to lots of people on YouTube. That's John. Uh, to Juan, who says, if I turn my phone off, I can't watch the live. Well, if you turn your phone off, you can watch the recording later. The recordings are available everywhere. Uh, it's a good point, actually, a serious point. If you are really interested in getting help with your DJ, and the best place to watch this is on Facebook. And the reason for that is that any questions you ask underneath remain underneath the recording as well as being on the live. Whereas on YouTube, the chat kind of like gets sent off to the side. So we can't come and answer you afterwards. So. Facebook's probably the best place to watch this, facebook.com slash digital DJ tips. Hello to Gregory in Louisiana, USA. Uh, to Justin says, this is a good question from Justin. Do these support Algorithms DJ Pro AI? And the answer is yes, they do support Algorithms DJ Pro AI. So you can plug in your Mac or your even your um, iPhone or iPad, I think, uh, and then these work fine with them, but they definitely work with your Mac, the, the CDJ 3000s. Hello to Salvation Drum and Bass. Hi, Phil. Hi, chat on YouTube. Uh, to Kenny Less, holding it down for the, Qu the Twitch gang. We don't give Twitch enough love, Kenny, but thank you very much for holding it down for the Twitch gang over there. Chris, hi, Phil and Digital DJ Tips crew. First time here for a while. Right, people, we are here to help you. And so let's get started. Any DJ questions you have, I will try my hardest to help you. And if not, someone in the community will, because that's the fun of this. Uh, so this first question is from DJ John Lowe, who says, hi, Phil, if my Serato crashes during a set, can I still have an external line plugged into the controller and use that till my MacBook reboots? And yes, the good news is that you can. So that means that you can play something through your phone, for instance, uh, while you reboot your MacBook. Do you know if Pioneer stopped making the DDJ RX2, says PJ Macca. I would say they certainly did stop making the RX2 probably a while ago because the DDJ 1000 is their kind of current record box controller. Uh, hello to Kez, hello to Charles on Facebook and Philip on Facebook, who's in uh, South Carolina, DJ Bingo. Uh, hello to you. Uh, you don't like my music, hello to you. Uh, all our regulars piling in, of course. Uh, this is from Jermaine, who says, have you gotten a chance to use the Aerocaster? I'm looking to buy one when it's available in my area. Uh, and no, we haven't got a chance to use the Aerocaster. For people who don't know what the Aerocaster is, uh, I, will, uh, I will dial it up on the screen and show you. Uh, so the Aerocaster is a piece of equipment made by Roland, uh, which is designed to help you to uh, live stream from your DJ studio or wh wherever it is you want to live stream, whatever it is uh, that you want to live stream, but using all your iOS devices. So this is actually really pretty cool. So the idea is you get this little mixer that you can see in the middle of the screen there, and you probably you'd use an iPad as the kind of 
the kind of screen that controls the mixer, but then any other iOS devices you've got knocking around, uh, old iPhones, old iPods, uh, anything really, um, current iPhones, you can plug in and then using Wi-Fi, you can link them all together with the, uh, with the um, iPad running Roland's special Aerocaster software and the piece of hardware, which lets you switch between them and basically create a live stream. So this could be really cool for DJs who are live streaming their DJ sets. And of course, if you're live streaming your DJ set, the chances are quite high that you're using your laptop to DJ with. Now, I have live streamed many DJ sets using the same laptop to DJ with that I'm DJing through with DJ software. But it can be fiddly. You're switching from different pieces of software. And I did have mistakes where I accidentally pressed the wrong button and the music stopped and so on. If you want to just use your laptop for DJing and use something else for live streaming, using the iOS devices, you've probably got knocking around anyway, uh, it, it can be a really good idea. So that's what the Roland Aerocaster is all about. And they have sent us one, or they're meant to be sending us one, but we haven't received it yet. So we are not able to review that. But uh, we will be doing so. So thank you for your question there. Uh, right, live questions, ask, them, ask away. We are here to help you. Uh, there's only two rules. Thank you, Ivan, for this. Uh, keep calm and ask once. Hashtag ask is a good idea if you want me to see your comment. Once, please don't keep uh, typing your comments in again and again. It just clogs it up for everyone else. Uh, so uh, Ricky says, I've been playing with Serato DJ Pro. I can simply mix strictly on my laptop, no mouse, but I realize I need a controller to function correctly. What controller and software would you recommend? You know, the uh, Serato Pro, with what's called Serato Play, which is the software that lets you mix on just your laptop, is really, really cool. I did a mix a year or two ago using just my laptop uh, and I put it on YouTube just to show it could be done and showing all the key presses and stuff. It takes a bit of getting used to, but you very much can mix on just the laptop. But of course, as you've realized, it's a lot more fun to mix using uh, a proper controller. The controller, honestly, the first controller I'd recommend to any Serato user nowadays, uh, if you just said recommend one, uh, would be this one. It is the, uh, the the Newmark Mixed Track Platinum FX. You can get this for about £200 in the United Kingdom, so I guess it's going to be around $200 in the US, which is a brilliant, brilliant deal for a controller which has got in-jog displays, it's got uh, four channels, it's got easy access to effects, it's got uh, pads, really nicely built. If you buy Serato DJ Pro software, you can use all eight pads for your cues and so on. It's just amazing value for money, really nicely built controller, my favorite controller, um, all things considered right now. In the budget section for Serato is this one here, the Mixtrack Platinum FX. There's also the Mixtrack Platinum Pro which if you only want, uh, or Pro FX, I think it's called, yeah, Mixed Track Pro FX, sorry, which if you only want to use um, two decks and you don't need the in-jog displays, you'll save a few dollars or pounds or whatever uh, for buying that one, but that's the one I'd go for because you get so much for your money there. Live questions, people. By the way, if you haven't done it before, now is my time to tell you, sign up for Digital DJ Tips. You get a copy of our book. It's really simple to sign up. Go to that URL there, digitaldjtips.com slash join. Uh, more importantly, yes, we'd love to give you a copy of the book, which by the way, is also on audiobook, also on Kindle, and also in all good bookshops. We'd love to give you a copy of that for free. You get the PDF when you join. But more importantly, you get our weekly Tuesday Tips email. And Tuesday Tips is the best way to learn how to DJ because every week we give you free mixes, free lessons from our courses, all the latest DJ news and features and just interesting stuff. You'll look forward to that email every week when it drops on a Thursday, on a Tuesday, uh, and uh, you get that um, for joining Digital DJ Tips for nothing. So do go join. Once again, uh, the link is below me there. You get the book. You also get the gear guide, uh, which is uh, to save you making expensive errors when you're buying DJ gear. What's to lose? Come join us. Right, live questions, loads and loads of them. So let's move on to the next one. Um, could you explain the new, <laughs> this is DJ Pistol Pete. Right, let me uh, put a bit of background onto DJ Pistol Pete's question here because I've gone up to confess something. Uh, so DJ Pistol Pete says, could you explain the new Serato DJ Word Sync feature? Is it part of a subscription? So Word Sync uh, was something that we announced on Digital DJ Tips the other day uh, on this article here. Serato adds exciting new Word Sync feature to its software. Uh, Serato has announced an exciting feature that lets DJs transition between tracks based upon the software, spotting matching words in song lyrics. The new word sync feature automatically spots 
when the same word occurs in each track and performs a clean cut. We first had beat sync, then key sync, and now word sync. It adds a new dimension to how our software helps DJs, says the company. Unfortunately, uh, and the giveaway is now at the top of the post somewhere. Uh, it is an April Fool. This was published on the 1st of April. Serato has not added word sync to its software and you cannot get that feature. So sorry if that one, uh, if that one uh, tricked you, Pistol Pete, you weren't alone. I think we got Jazzy Jeff with it. I certainly got my colleague Steve with it as well. Uh, but no, that doesn't exist. Uh, Alana says, which controller is the best? What do you recommend? You, you know, imagine you're a photographer and someone says, which camera is the best? You're gonna say, what for, right? The best camera you've got is probably the one in your pocket. It's in your phone. So, but then again, you could spend £5,000 on a, on, a, on a DSLR with all the lenses. What is best for you, as far as DJ controllers go, depends upon a whole load of other stuff. So look, I've said it twice already, I'm gonna say it again. Join us if you're not a member because you get that gear guide, the one on the end, the white one, which will give you lots of information to stop you making big errors. But another place I want to push you towards is the website. If you head to the roundups section on digitaldjtips.com, you'll find lots and lots of head-to-heads and roundups of DJ equipment, including Serato DJ controllers, which you can see I'm kind of hovering over here. Serato tractor, record box DJ controllers. This is a very good place to start when you are looking at uh, the controllers that are out there. Another place to go to is our reviews section where you can choose uh, the kind of DJ gear you want. You want to look at controllers, you want to narrow that down to tractor. So there we go, there's your options. This is a really nice place to, uh, to start narrowing down things that will help you choose. But look, the, the key thing here is what do you want? Uh, the only piece of advice I'll give you is if you're new to DJing, don't spend an awful lot. You can buy a really good entry level controller like the mixed track uh, that I showed you a minute ago. This one here, although other controller. In fact, let's show you another one. Here's another entry level controller. This is the Serato um, D DDJ Rev 1 from Pioneer, the DDJ Rev 1. Um, you know, you can buy a beginner controller like this, which should be brilliant for learning to DJ on, two or three hundred dollars. And then when it's time to buy a big setup, you know exactly what to spend your money on. I mean, a setup like this is going to cost you, I don't know, six, seven thousand. You don't want to make a mistake, even if you've got the money, of buying something big like this only to find it wasn't what you needed. Uh, and the beauty about buying a two, three hundred dollar DJ controller is that it will always be there for you to use when you can't be bothered taking your big gear out. And also it will be there as a backup system even when you are turning up with your pro gear. So it will not go to waste is what I'm trying to say here. But the trouble is, you know, you don't know whether something like I've got here is the right choice until you've owned DJ gear for a little while. And for most people, by the way, this isn't the right choice. It's, it's overkill. But until you've had a go, until you've DJ'd a bit, you played a few gigs, you don't know what is right for you. So there's no point spending all that money early on. So just three, set yourself a three, $400 limit on what you're gonna spend uh, and buy a beginner controller. Uh, so uh, we've got loads and loads of people asking questions now, as always happens. So I'm gonna pull back across to the live show. Um, so how do you control this live broadcast? Wow, that's a good question. I uh, wasn't expecting that one. Um, well, unfortunately, I don't have a camera back here to show you what's going on. In fact, I do kind of have a camera back here. Let me just, no, I can't. I can't zoom out on it enough. Um, well, this is all set up with cameras everywhere. There's one in front of me that I'm talking to you on now. There's another one uh, above, which you can see. There's one over there behind that will let me show you behind stuff. Uh, there's one over in the corner, which kind of like comes down with another angle of the gear we're looking at. There's even the legacy Comment cam, we used to call this a comment cam when I couldn't get comments over there, but we can get comments over there now. Uh, so we've got all these kind of cameras set up all around me. We've also got the feed coming in from the computer, which is what you can see there. Uh, but because we've got the feed coming in from the computer, I can actually show you how we control the broadcast because we use a software uh, that looks like this, uh, which is controlling our hardware switcher, which is a bit like that Aerocaster thing I showed you earlier. It's this little box I've got on the desktop here. So this is the software version of that. It's showing us what cameras, we have got going and shows us that we're on air okay and so on. Uh, and then we have a media section, which has got all our stuff in like our 
pictures that we want to put onto the broadcast. So for instance, I've got a James Hype course link there. So if I wanted to put the James Hype course link on, then there's a button that I can press to make the James Hype course link happen. Uh, and uh, we've got the audio, which is what you're looking at there, and also camera controls as well. So it's all pretty cool the way this works, but uh, the bottom line is it's easy for just me and a producer or even just me in the studio to control the whole broadcast. And, hopefully give you some value that way, but uh, it's taken a long time to reach this point. What was I saying about DJ controllers? Like there's thousands and thousands of pounds worth of gear here, but we made mistakes along the way. And uh, if, if I had to go back and do it differently, I would have spent a lot less money. So try not to waste money on your DJ gear. Try and, try and be very careful and only buy what you need when you need it. But yeah, the studio here is awesome. We're really pleased with it. We're making improvements to it all the time. So thank you for noticing and thank you for being curious. Um, right, okay, let's go back to our um, DJing questions, what we're really here for. Um, this is from um, Daryl, who says, I want to step up from my Hercules Impulse 500, but Hercules don't do a straight upgrade. Any ideas from about six to 700 pounds? So you have a Hercules um, Impulse 500 controller, which is a nice little controller, and you want something a bit better. So the Hercules is a Serato controller, so you're probably going to want to stick with Serato. I would leapfrog the six to 700 pound price range and I would go straight for the Pioneer DJ DDJ1000 SRT, the Pioneer DJ DDJ1000 SRT. Um, so if you head over to the Digital DJ Tips website, click the little um, magnifying glass in the top corner. Uh, one way of doing this would just be to type DDJ1000 SRT into the top there uh, and then you will get all of our info about that controller um, and this should help you decide if this is the right one for you or you could have just stayed where you were and then sorted DJ controllers Serato, and then look for the DDJ 1000 SRT in here. Um, as are all the other Serato controllers, so you can compare what's out there. Uh, the DDJ 1000 SRT will cost you a lot more than your budget, but the reason I'm recommending you go for this one is that there's no point upgrading from a three or four hundred pound dollar controller and then getting one that costs six or seven hundred, because you're not going to get a real improvement in anything much better to upgrade to something that's two or three times the price that will last you the next 10 years. So I would say save a little bit longer and go for that. Now another controller I can recommend for Serato users who want to move up from a beginner controller is actually this one here. It's the Roland DJ707M. So I'm gonna try and give you a close up of the 707M uh, with this camera here. So the 707M is a really, really nice controller for the money. It's gonna cost you less than the DDJ1000, still cost you more than your 700 limit. But the beauty about this is, it might not look much, frankly, little jog wheels, not very big, but this sounds great. It's got a built-in roll and sequencer. It's got all the Serato functions, but it's got stuff that none of the others have got. Let me give you an idea about some of the things this can do that other controllers can't do. This can play music in one room on one of your channels, and then you can use the other three to DJ in the room you're currently in. Mobile DJs love this stuff. This has got compressor and equalizer over the master output. Now that means that whatever you're doing on the decks, before it goes off to the speakers, you can tweak the audio. You can make it sound fuller, punchier, brighter. You can add volume to it. You can re-EQ it. So a lot of DJs find that they plug into a PA system in a venue and it's too, too tinny or there's not enough high end, or the bass is too boomy, or whatever. The only way to control that is by using your EQs on the individual channels. And so you're DJing the whole night with your bass turned down on all the channels, that's no good. This will let you fix that without having to turn down on these ones because it's got EQ over the main outputs. And it's got loads of other clever stuff as well. You can save all that kind of settings. It's just for, for your money, this is the thinking person Serato controller. I'm endlessly impressed by how good this is. And it doesn't get the, you know, you plug two DJs in, it's got all the right outputs so that you can plug in booth monitors and all that kind of stuff and professional microphones and stuff. So it's got all the stuff you'd expect from a better controller, but you are paying a lot less than, um, you know, the, some of the more well-known brands. So the Roland DJ707M would be another one to look at, but I wouldn't recommend trying to upgrade to a six or 700 controller when you've already got a three or 400 controller. It doesn't make sense. Um, right, live questions. We're here in the Digital DJ Tips studio. We've got the, uh, we've got the, uh, the, the flagship really, 
Pioneer system here too, CDJ 3000s and the DJM 900 Nexus 2 mixer all set up, ready to talk about if this is something you want to talk about. But we've also got gear from uh, all over the place as you're starting to see as well. So we can talk to you about that as well. Whatever you want to talk about, we're here. Uh, the next live question then. This one is from Philip who says, I have the Newmark Mix Stream Pro. How do you use search to create playlists? How do you use search to create playlists. So I'm not sure what you mean by that. You know, you can search in your DJ software. I mean, I haven't got Serato here, but I have got, um, I have got um, Rekordbox and they're very, very similar. So let's just go into Rekordbox. You know, you've got a search box in your DJ software. So I don't know, maybe I'm searching for songs with the word love in the title. There we go, there's all my love songs. Um, not literally love songs, but you know what I mean. Um, so I've now done a search. Now, if I wanted to turn these songs into a playlist, the way I would do it would be by highlighting them all uh, and then um, right click, add to playlist, and then go to a playlist that I want to put them in. Um, and if I haven't got one, then go make one first. And it's very, very similar in Serato. You don't actually have right click in Serato, um, but you press Command and A to highlight everything and then just drag it to a playlist on the left hand side. So that's how to make search results into a playlist. Um, if you want to, um, you know, that's what you're trying to achieve, then that's definitely how to do it. But unless I um, have misunderstood your question, I'm, I'm, there's something I missed. That, yeah, that's what I would say there, Philip. Um, anyway, let us know. Hope that helped. Um, Alex says, have you got any tips on building a music library? Well, funnily enough, you were just looking at my music library there. This is actually my real, my real music library that I've got on here. So the tips to building a music library, um, my tips are that what, they're all in the book. The first thing is they're all in the book. So do go grab the book. Um, it says it a lot better than I'm going to say it now. But, you know, my tips would be um, add to your library very little and often. Don't try and add lots and lots of tunes at once. Listen to each tune carefully before you add it. Uh, when your library reaches uh, an optimum size, when you think, I don't really want any more tracks than that, start taking them out when you're putting them in. But never take a, a track out of your library until you've listened to it again. Because quite often you think, oh, I'm bored of that, I'll get rid of it. All it takes is one listen for you to realise actually you still love it. Uh, so never add or remove a track without listening to it. Keep your library small, only add the really important tracks and keep it organised. Make sure you've got all the metadata right. If you've got artwork, if you like artwork, make sure the artwork's there. And obviously artist, title, year. I find year a more important thing to add than relying on the date added. Because the thing with relying on the date added column in your software is that you might take all your stuff out of it and then put it back in on another computer and then the date added suddenly becomes today's date. So you've, got, you've lost that sense of when you put your tracks into it. Um, whereas the year the track was released will never change. So I always like having year. And genre is a good thing to add as well. Now, genre is an important one actually. Let's look at my genres here because there's a bit, it's a bit instructive this. I'm going to make the genre column more visible by going to the full browser and then sorting by genre. So you can see here that in, this isn't my whole collection actually, I've just realised, but it's enough of my collection for you to understand what I mean. You can see here, look at my genres. I've got acapellas, I've got ambient, I've got breakbeat, I've got chill house, I've got chill out, I've got deep house, drum and bass, electronica, I've got some house, indie, old school, pop, progressive, R&B, rock and UK garage. Uh, and that's it. They are my genres. And I'm a DJ that's been DJing for, uh, that's actually about a tenth of my collection there. I wonder where the rest is. Uh, that's um, me, a DJ that's been DJing for many, many, many years. Uh, and yet my collection is only got like half a dozen genres or 10 genres or something. Um, and the reason for this is that the genres need to matter to you. You know, to me, house is enough. I don't play an awful lot of house nowadays. I don't need 15 different house genres. House is enough as a genre for me. And it could be the same for you as well. It could be that you, um, you're a mobile DJ, so you just need oldies, uh, pop, hip hop, and dance, right? But if you are a house DJ, if you're like a, a tech house DJ, you might have four or five different ways of describing your tech house. And therefore, you know, my, my, my category, or even the mobile DJ's category of just house or even dance, is going to be woefully inadequate, inadequate to you. So the important thing is to make sure that you've got categories that matter to you in your library and that you're not uh, relying on A, the ones that come from the like Beatport or wherever you buy your music from, because that's not going to make any sense to anyone. Um, so you don't want to be relying on, on like what's given to you by them. Uh, but also at the same time, you don't want to be relying on uh, thinking you've got to have all these official categories and like, like 
carving it all out into a million different genres. Because at the end of the day, it's only they're only there because they're going to help you what you want to play. So if you want to play disco, maybe have a disco category. So oh, well, I'm doing a disco set tonight. Right, we'll put all the disco sounding records in a disco set. You might have Daft Punk's Get Lucky in there. You know, um, that, no, some, someone else might not put that in a disco folder. They might put it in pop. Someone else might put it in house but put things where they matter to you. Uh, there's no point in having genres otherwise. So there you go, there's a few pieces of music advice, but I would say again that the, that the best place to look is in the book, so go get the book. Right, let's go grab another question from the many questions that are now piling in on the airwaves, so to speak. Uh, this is from, uh, actually this one um, ties in really nicely. So Reza says, I've got a question regarding programming a house set. Uh, I really can't tell the difference between house music. To me, it's all very similar. Although it's much easier to mix, I'm, I'm unable to appreciate the uniqueness of each track. Reza, don't rush it. You've got to listen to music for thousands and thousands of hours to start to see the, the similarities and the differences and the nuances between the tracks. If you like them, put them in your collection and play them. Uh, and at, over time, you'll start to figure out what the differences are. So don't try and rush it. You know, house music is basically a beat at around 120 BPM with some music and maybe a vocalist. It's, they, they do sound quite similar. You will, you will you'll build it up over time. Uh, so uh, Linnell says, uh, Serato finally supports the RX3, but it's still hilarious. They announced the Numark NS4 FX before it's available, lol. So this is the news that we announced today on the website that Serato is now uh, compatible with the Pioneer DJ XDJ RX3, a really good standalone DJ system. And also that uh, there is the worst kept secret in DJ land that there is a new Numark controller, clearly on the way very soon, uh, that hasn't been officially announced, but, uh, but was by certain people out there. And uh, so everyone knows about it. So we'll let you know about that officially when we get the info. Right, let's grab some more live questions. Hey, DJ Purple Freak, how are you? Uh, hello to Patrick and Java Man on Facebook and Gems over on YouTube. Uh, will there be a Denon LC6000M? Comes the question from uh, Jody. Will there be a Denon LC6000M? I don't know. Shall we go get an LC6000? I'm gonna have to go off camera for a second to do so because it's over here behind the camera. This is a... LC6000 DJ controller from Denon. This is a deck, it's too big to actually fit in that camera. This is a deck which has uh, been designed to work with Denon DJ's media players. So the uh, SC6000 for instance, they also work with the Prime 4. And you plug it in just via a USB cable, it hasn't got any audio cables on it, and it will break out the extra deck because Dead and DJ's media players, unlike the Pioneers that we've got on the screen in front of us here, each can control two decks. So this is the Dead and DJ SC6000 player, and this, even though it's just one deck, has got a layer button which will let you control more than one deck. The layer button is, where is it? Can't see with my glasses on. Can't remember. Anyway, somewhere there it is. Um, which will switch over from deck. So you've got a pair of these. You've got one on the left of your mixer and one on your right of your mixer, just like this. This one, assuming these were the Denons, would control tracks one and three or channels one and three, and that would control channels two and four. Uh, and so the idea there is that, uh, uh, is, is that um, you've got four channels, like on your mixer, but only two decks to control them with a button to switch. Uh, now that's okay but it can be quite hard. You can get quite confused by that kind of thing. I'm just gonna put this back where it belongs while we're talking. Because you've got to remember which deck you're on and all that stuff. So these here are basically a breakout deck, which will take over that extra deck. So you can put one of these on either side of a two deck setup and have four physical decks, which makes it easier to mix that way. And you can look like James Hype or Carl Cox at the same time, which is always a bonus. Uh, so the LC6000 is a reasonably cheap controller. And now it also works with Serato and Traktor, I believe. So you can use it with all kinds of software. Uh, will they make a motorized version? I don't know. I mean, they will have talked about it for sure, because why not? Um, but I haven't heard anything about it. I certainly wouldn't put it past them to add a motorized version of that. In fact, I'm just gonna, I'll ask them the question. I'll be cheeky um, and ask them the question directly. I'm just making a note about that on my little post-it. Find out for you. 
Right, we are here, we're live. It's Phil in the Digital DJ Tip Studio. Give us some thumbs up and hearts and loves and favorites wherever you are, whatever platform you're on, whatever your ability is to say you're enjoying this. I'd thoroughly appreciate that uh, and share it even if you are totally enjoying it. Uh, let's grab another live question. We're here for about another 20 minutes or so. Uh, Pete says, uh, thanks, Phil. I got both Jazzy Jeff's DJ course and DJ Angelo's. Both are amazing, good work. Uh, but what do you think is the ultimate transition te technique for multi-genre mixing? Well, ultimate is the wrong word, but the most used transition technique is without doubt the echo out, where you're literally playing a track and you hit echo because it sounds really good. And also it lets you mix in uh, the next track, uh, whatever the next track might be. Uh, but one little trick for echo out, which I'm, I can't demonstrate to you on here, but one little trick for echo out is an echo out will always echo on the beat of the currently playing track, right? So your track's playing like this, you hit echo and it goes But if the track you're mixing into is a different BPM, then it'll still sound pretty good mixing over that, but there's a better way of doing it. And that is all the uh, DJ systems, most DJ systems have a tap function. And the tap function will decide how quickly the echo works. So for instance, if we've selected an echo on here, and I've selected a 1B echo, uh, I could instead tap. And that's telling me it's a 75 BPM tap I just did. So if the next track, if you're going from a 120 BPM track to a 75, what you can do is you can dial in the echo effect, leave it turned off, get this one on 75 BPM in your headphones and tap along to this track in your headphones to lock in the BPM of that one on your echo. And then when you want to end this track, you press stop. You, well, you actually in the, uh, in the other order, you press echo, then you press stop, and then it will echo out, not at the BPM of this one, but at the BPM of the new one. Then when you drop the new track in, the echo and the new track's beat will be going together. It's as simple as a quick tap, and it just tightens up that echo transition. So there's a little tip for you. If you've never tried that, you can do it on nearly all DJ software. So try the tap echo. Um, will DJ Pro, says Justin, uh, replace Serato as the main DJ software? No, it, it won't replace Serato as the main DJ software. Um, it just won't. Serato, Rekordbox are the two big ones. And as far as I'm aware, concerned will be for uh, the, the foreseeable future. Um, Alex, I'm currently on Serato. I want to, uh, should I switch to Rekordbox if I want to play in clubs and be more professional? No, but there's nothing wrong with learning how to use this stuff. You can do both. So um, James Hype, our tutor, did switch from Serato to Rekordbox for that very reason. But you don't need to do that. Um, you can use both, use whatever you want. Uh, Meriton says, uh, Day before last I was on fire, the audience was on fire and everything was perfect, but almost everything was the same. How should we DJs look at these ups and downs? So you're saying, yeah, you had a good gig and then a bad gig. The way I like to look at this is that DJing is never consistent, especially at the beginning of your DJ career. You have a good gig, you have a really terrible gig, you get fired, you get given a job, you get paid loads of money, you can't get a gig for six months. It goes up and down like a roller coaster. And one of the things that continuing with it gives you is consistency. So don't expect consistency early on. Um, and you know, it will come. So thank you very much to um, one of our Facebook group people who I, I, I can't see your name here for bigging up the book. Remember, if you want a copy of the book, you don't have to buy it. You can do, but you don't have to. Go there and we'll give you a free copy, digitaldjtips.com slash join. Uh, so I've got lots and lots of questions to choose from. Just bear with me while I do so. Um, this next one is from Patrick, who's having issues with live streaming. What's the recommendation for frame rates? Everything I seem to do bogs down my PC with three link videos recording live. You have to be realistic when you are DJing and going out live on, on, a, on a computer, even just using a computer for OBS to go live on. Video is very, very demanding. What I would recommend you do is put one camera, forget three cameras, put one camera in, uh, Patrick, Patrick, yeah, yeah. Put one camera into your computer, set it to 720, 720 HD, no higher than that. Set the frame rate to 24 if you're in the US, 25 if you're in Europe, and uh, see if that works. Do a live stream like that. If you can get that to work, add one more camera at 720, 25. Uh, and uh, if that works, add a third one. Uh, at some point your computer will, 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 will 
keel over. Don't go for 50 or um, uh, any higher than 24 or 25 frames per second. And certainly don't go higher than 720. Uh, you might even have to go down to 480 if you want to use three cameras. And this refers, by the way, to imagine this is a, um, imagine this is a, screen this is a camera uh, this down this side you've got this one and this one haven't you this one is the one we use in resolution so we'd say 480 720 uh, 1080 uh, and they're the three big resolutions the three uh, um, standard high definition and ultra high definition actually it's not anyway i'm not going to go into the details but basically when people talk about resolutions and give you a number they're talking about that short part of the screen but yeah try 720 and try just one camera and then two if that works and then three uh, you 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 can't learn to run before you walk with this stuff for sure i'm hoping if den and dj will update the mix track pro oh that's just disappeared off the top of my screen uh, that's annoying sorry about that so if that was your comment uh, we just they're just coming in too quickly for me to see and it's not letting me scroll back so there we go um, lots of you asking about this supposedly mythical um, Newmark controller. Uh, I will let you know about it when it's official. Uh, so, I need to buy a new laptop to run Serato, says Peace Soup. My 2010 MacBook Pro finally needs replacing, although it still works. The new kit has run, has outrun it. What we saying, bro? Uh, you can run Serato on a, a basic MacBook Air. Uh, I wouldn't, if you're just going to run Serato and, and you're not worried, that's the, the biggest thing you're going to do is your DJ software. The real thing is buying one with a big enough hard disk drive to hold all your music, because I, I do believe it's best to keep your music on a hard disk drive inside the computer and not go for an external drive. I mean, we use external drives here. This is a one we made ourselves, which is a, um, it's actually a U-Green case uh, built into a, uh, it's a Samsung um, drive, really fast Samsung SSD, but in a, in a generic U-Green case. It cost about 400 euros, which is about $500, which when we bought that was a lot cheaper than buying the equivalent um, one, you know, one in a case uh, already built. And we just had to build it. it, took about five minutes. I mean, these are okay to keep your music collection on, but there's another wire and there's another thing to plug into your laptop. Uh, I would just strongly recommend using the internal hard drive. So buy one with a big enough hard drive. That'd be my only real advice. Nowadays, the uh, all the modern MacBooks can easily run Serato. There is a page on Serato's website with recommended uh, recommended uh, spec, but it's kind of laughably low. So let's let's find it together. Let's just go and have a look. So if you do it to Google Serato minimum spec, you will find the page at the top there, Serato DJ Pro system requirements. But these are pretty damn, you know, any Mac from the last 10 years can more or less do this. Uh, you've got to have a look there anyway and uh, you can find out. But uh, yeah, I'm running, for instance, I'm running this, my Serato, not only Serato, but Tractor and Rekordbox, normally all at the same time for demonstration purposes, plus um, some streaming software on a basic current MacBook Air. But I don't need to have a massive music collection on there. So therefore it's got the 256 gig SSD and, and that's not going to be enough for most DJs. So that's where I'd spend the extra money on that personally. Right, let's grab some more questions. Uh, the Rocker said, I loved that April Fool's gag. It exposed a lot of so-called DJs that really do not want to have to actually mix. Not everyone who fell for it, mind you, but enough did. Uh, well, the idea wasn't to wind people up. It was just, uh, couldn't resist it. Uh, right. Um, uh, the Rocker says, I know you can't do it today, but can you show us how you have the overhead camera mounted? Uh, can I show you how we have the overhead camera mounted? Um, the only way I could potentially do that, I'm thinking outside the box here, the ruckus, is I could take a photo of it and then I could hold the photo up against the camera. How about that? Does that sound like a good idea? I mean, it's never a good idea when I start going off script. The producers just sit here and wave at me and say, stop, Phil, don't do that, but I'm going to do it. Um, so um, let's get the camera app up and I will take a photo of the overhead camera here and I'll show you how it works. I'm coming around the back to where you can see a, a really good view of it. There we go, that looks like quite a good photo. I mean, if I was really clever, I would air, I would um, now, what's the word I'm looking for? Airdrop that to that computer and put it big on the screen. Should we do that? Should we do that just because we can? I'll, air, I'll airdrop it over here and get it up on the screen. How's that sound? That sound good? I'm opening the damn thing now. Open. Here we go. There we go. I'm quite proud of myself there. Live on air. I'm showing you our overhead camera. This is what it looks like. There you go. So we've got mounted just above where you can see my head on this shot here. 
is the uh, is the camera mount screwed to the wall and I've got this big long mount here and the camera is over there and this is actually an emergency microphone here uh, because the actual microphone I'm using is the one that you can see here. Um, and the reason it's on the wall, by the way, is that we've got one of those false ceilings here. You can see it in that photo there, which means that it's really difficult to, uh, to mount stuff on the ceiling. Otherwise, I'd definitely have a bar across the ceiling that I can mount the cameras on uh, because uh, it makes it easier to move them around and stuff. But um, effectively, that is how it works. There we go. Don't you love these live shows? We go up to all sorts, don't we? Uh, let's grab some more live questions. Um, so Isaac says, hi, Phil, I've got a weird thing with my Denon DJ Prime Go and with a Mix Stream Pro. Both are working well, but they're not seen at all by my Denon mixer or by a Newmark mixer when I use the RCAs. They work on amps. Well, the fact that you've used the words they're not seen makes me think that there's something you're not understanding about how this works. So let's look at the back of this setup here and let's talk about how gear is plugged into mixers. So gear is plugged into a mixer with usually an audio cable, which is a standard audio cable uh, that takes an audio output from one and plugs it into the other. So I'm grabbing an audio cable now in the background because I haven't got one down there to show you. And these are currently set up in a slightly different way to the way that um, I'm recommending or that I'm talking to you about. So I'm looking for an audio cable now. Will that one do? That one will do. Right, so round the back of here, uh, here is our mixer, right? So this is the same as any mixer that you might want to use. It's got the same inputs and outputs. Here is a DJ unit. So let's say this is your Denon DJ Prime Go, or this is your Mixtrack Pro. You're going to take the single audio output, because they both only got, actually, I think the Denon's got another one, but you're going to take your RCA output, you're going to plug it in there, and this is now carrying your audio. You're going to plug this into a spare channel on the mixer. So this could be the line in there. It's got to be a line channel, okay? And that's how your audio gets in. If you do that, there's no reason why the mixer will not work with that unit. There's nothing to do with the compatibility, whether this is a Denon or a Newmark or a Hercules or whatever. As long as it's got an audio out and as long as there's audio coming out of it and you said it's working when you plug it into your amp, so we know there is, then when you plug it into your mixer, it will just work. There's nothing that can go wrong with that. So the issue has got to be on your mixer. And I'm going to suspect that what you're not doing is switching the input matrix, which is what this button here is. I know it's quite hard for you to see that on there. Uh, I might be able to zoom in on that. I'm not sure. Let's have a go. Nope. That's not it. There we go. There's a zoom. Uh, so this input matrix here has to be set to line because you just plugged it into a line input. That can't be set to digital or computer uh, or phono or anything else. It's got to be set to line. So as long as that's set to the right thing and as long as you're plugged into the right channel, there's absolutely no reason why that shouldn't work. So give that a go because if you're hearing it on your amp, then it's definitely working and it's nothing to do with your, it's nothing to do with your, um, uh, controllers, so I don't think it's anything to do with them. Get that cable out of the way there, so it doesn't confuse me down the line. Uh, so um, Alex says I'm on Serato, but I want to switch to Recordbox to use CDJs in clubs, uh, as as we have set up here. Uh, any reason to stay away from the Flex Six? The Flex Six is the controller from Pioneer DJ, which is uh, it's got nice big jog wheels, just like this. Uh, the only reason I stay away from the Flex 6 is apart from the nice big jog wheels, it's built like the cheapest of cheap DJ controllers. Cheap plastic, very few inputs and outputs. Uh, I don't like it. It's not, once you spend past three or four hundred dollars, to me, you want to start getting something a bit more pro. If I was you, I'd get the Pioneer DJ, DDJ 1000. Save up the extra and go for that. But if you want to switch to record box and you can only afford that and you want the big jog wheels, then hey, go for it. But just be aware that it's the build quality is like the DDJ 400, like the basic controllers, no better. And I just think once you get to that size, you want you want a bit more with the quality and the inputs and the outputs and so on. Personal opinion. Uh, so uh, lots of you chatting about the hype course. I'm glad you're enjoying it. If you don't know about the hype course, uh, it was one that we had on sale because we just launched it recently with James Hype, uh, where he teaches production. Uh, it's a really, really cool course. And the, the really exciting news on the DJ uh, James Hype course is that it is um, showing him making a song that we made with him in the studio over a week. Uh, and guess what? 
The song has just been signed by Oliver Heldens, is being mastered at the moment and is about to get a release. So this isn't any old rubbish. You're going to see exactly how James makes a song that ends up being si signed by one of the top labels in the world and put out uh, for real. So great course. Um, and thank you for joining it. And I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, right, let's get more... Uh, Chat, yeah, Scratch Gonzo says, I'm not a fan of James Hype's style of music, but he does play it well. Thing is, we've made this course for people who are a fan of James's style. We've got other, other production courses, of course, for other, other folk, but thank you. Thank you for your feedback. Um, I'm lovely to see you all chatting about courses. Dr. Clara says, I bought the Angelo course. It's another great course. Um, so uh, the Ruckus says, this is that discussion about the, the Pioneer DJ Flex 6. Um, the Ruckus says, because it isn't an upgrade, it's an overglorified beginner's controller, very plastic and gimmicky. That's exactly what I was trying to say. Um, Alex says, do you think the MacBook M1 is a good investment instead of an Intel i5 or i7 for DJing? doesn't really matter, they all do the job fine. I like the M1 because the MacBook Air is very quiet, like there's no fan in it, um, and I like Macs, but maybe you like Windows. You know, as long as it's able to do the job, we don't care what platform you use. The, the Windows computer that we recommend, by the way, if you can get it, and it's a bit hard to get outside of Europe, uh, is this one, the XMG. Now it's a very standard looking vanilla laptop, um, but this laptop's got one great thing, two great things actually. Um, firstly, the XMG uh, is optimized for DJs right from the very off. So the people who make this have taken out all the stuff that you don't need, or at least as much stuff you don't need that it's possible to take off a Windows computer, um, and optimized it, done all the tweaks ready for DJing. Um, it's got the power where you need it and where you don't need it, screen resolution and all that stuff. They've just cut back. So that's not a good all-round PC, but for DJing, it's really good. But the second thing is the people who run that company are, are DJs. So you, any, you have any problems, they go over and above to help you. So you can only get that in Europe, the XMG laptop. It's hard to get elsewhere. Uh, but that is, uh, that's uh, our, our, our Windows recommendation. Um, right, more live questions. Hope you're enjoying uh, the live show, people. Um, so um, I always say at this time that we've just got chat going on. And I love it when we've just got chat going on because uh, I can just sit and watch you all chatting to each other in the comments. It's cool. Um, so Charles is talking about Engine OS. Now, this is, this is important, actually, to talk about this because it's starting to confuse people. I'm going to run behind the scenes again and grab another DJ controller from our big DJ cave, DJ controller cave over here, um, another DJ device, and I'm going to bring it to show and explain why this is starting to confuse people. So this is the um, Newmark Mix Track I'm sorry, Mix Stream Pro. This, as you can see, has a screen on it. And this doesn't need DJ software. This is a standalone controller, just like this is standalone, just like the Denon stuff, the SC6000 players we were showing you, and just like the Denon Prime 4 and Prime Go and Prime 2 are standalone. Now, the Denon stuff, the Prime 4, the Prime 2, the Prime Go, the SC6000s, and the Newmark all run software called Engine. Now, Engine comes in two colors. It comes in the Engine desktop, which is software you run on your computer to prepare your music, just uh, very similar to the, to the way that you run um, Rekordbox on a computer here uh, in order to uh, prepare your music, which you'll then export and put onto a USB drive to take with you to your gig, right? Uh, you do the same thing with that. You use your engine software, engine desktop software to, to prepare your music and export it to a drive to take with you to your gig. And then when you get to your gig, you plug it into the device. But engine is the software that works with both the Newmark Mix Stream that I've just put on the floor there and the Denon Prime. Uh, and the version that's running in the, in the units, the version that's running in here is called Engine OS. Uh, and so it's just worth knowing that because the company that makes all of this stuff, the company that makes Engine, Denon and Newmark is called InMusic and they've been trying to separate Engine DJ as a platform for standalone DJing that can work with different brands, hence the, the, the kind of um, emphasis on the new uh, on the new Engine DJ name. It's even got its own website, enginedj.com. Uh, and the, the comments, comment there was saying Engine's a bit of a mess. I need to get used to it. I would say Engine has really come on in leaps and bounds. The current version, Engine 2.0, they've cleaned up a lot of stuff I didn't like about it, and it's getting quite close to being really, really good. Um, the library functions are not as good as, as um, 
Recordbox is, but Recordbox has been library software for the last 10 years plus, but it's getting there, it's catching up fast. So Engine's it's good software, stick with it. Um, so this is a great, this is great fun. I'm going to share this with everyone because you might have missed it. So in one of our student, um, in one of our student uh, chats that we have in our student groups uh, yesterday, we were talking about uh, ways of getting op get optimized, ways of getting inspired to do your mixes. And I was chatting to one of our students, Craig, who's just popped up here uh, and said, I tried exactly what you said. Uh, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, and this is, Craig was saying, how do we kind of, it was a, he, he kind of had the idea, but we just had to finish it off for him. He was saying, how do we um, get inspired for our DJing again? Um, when maybe maybe getting a bit bored. So look, this is one idea we, we came up with. See if you like this. And if you do, you could have a go yourself. So what you do is you go into your music collection. Uh, so I, we know I've got 90 odd tracks here, don't we? Because we found out a minute ago when I highlighted them, I think it told me. Um, 91 tracks there, right? So imagine that was your collection. You had 91 tracks, but you, you don't know what to DJ with. Um, you want some ideas and you want to DJ like, you want to mix 10 tracks together, right? But you don't know which 10. Um, so here's a little, a little thing that we, we came up with. And you go find online, you go to Google and you can Google random number generator. Uh, and then it'll give you a random num number generator. So what did I say, 91 tracks? So you say, give me a number between one and 91, generate, and it gives you number 30. So now we've got that number 30, we can jump back to our DJ software and all our tracks, um, now you can have a number appear down here, I'm not sure how actually, but you can have a number appear with the tracks. So you go down and you find track 30 and you put it into a playlist and then you go back to your random number generator and you do the same thing again. Uh, and this time you uh, just click the button and it generates another number between one and 91. There you go, 43. You go and find track 43 until you've got 10 tracks and then you find a way of mixing between them. Uh, just a way of kind of like inspiring your mixing. It's a, It'd be good fun, wouldn't it, if we did that as a kind of live competition. We, we, we chose 10 tracks and we tried to mix them live on a, on a Twitch or something. We'll bear that one in mind. So I'm glad that's working for you, Craig. Thanks for sharing that. Um, right, unfortunately, people, we do have to wrap up here because I've got another, um, another, another class at the top of the hour. But I'm going to pick one more question and let me just give that advice again. If you've asked your question on Facebook, which is our preferred place, digitaldjtips.com, sorry, facebook.com slash digitaldjtips, or, or our Facebook groups, by the way, Student Hub or, or Global DJ Network, uh, we will get to you and we'll answer your question. If you've asked on YouTube, it will stay in the chat, but it's harder for us to answer your question afterwards. So best place to ask questions is on Facebook. So because of that, I'm gonna pull a question from the hundreds I've got here on YouTube. So sorry if you didn't get your question answered. Uh, I'm gonna pull a question from the hundreds that we've had on YouTube to, uh, to close off because I won't be able to easily answer these questions afterwards. Um, this is from John who says, how does James Hype prepare acapellas for mixing? Does he warp and edit them before using them or what? Yes, he most definitely does. So the thing with an acapella is it hasn't got a beat, right? There's no beat in an acapella. But actually, there is a beat if you think about it because the acapella has been taken from a track and that track for sure will have a beat. So if you are um, preparing acapellas, the best advice we can give you is to get the original track that the acapella was taken from uh, and lay it in your DJ software over the acapella and get them at so that the lyric lines up. And then once you've done that, it actually makes it a lot easier to put the beat grid onto the acapella. And then you know that even though there's no beat on the acapella, it will work when you hit the sync button. So on the Digital DJ Tips website, here's a tip for you, I'll show you one more time. Click the magnifying glass at the top and just type acapellas and we spell it with one C and two L's. Uh, and then you'll get all of our articles about acapellas of which we've got loads uh, but the most recent one the easy way to beat grid acapellas james hype actually will key shift his acapellas as well so he'll take the acapella he'll put it down a few notes and up a few notes and put all three versions in his software so no matter what he's mixing over he'll probably have a version that will fit or at least it's close enough for him to move it up or down a note or two in key uh, so uh, yeah james hype gets pretty 
uh, pretty, what's the word I'm looking for? It goes pretty deep on this, but yeah, he definitely doesn't just throw acapellas into the mix without thinking about them first. People, we gotta go. I'm really sorry we couldn't answer all your questions. Listen, if you've enjoyed this today, if you're new here, come join the website, digitaldjtips.com slash join is where to go. We'll give you a copy of the book. We'll send you our weekly email that'll help you become a better DJ. Look, I'm not here next week on Tuesday or Thursday because it's the Easter break, uh, but after that, we'll be back. So do come back next Tuesday, uh, as in not this coming Tuesday, uh, and two weeks today for the next Thursday Q&A Live. Get your questions in early and just a little tip. If you love this, but you think, oh, I never get my question answered. If you really enjoy this and you find this kind of teaching useful, then you can head over to Digital DJ Tips' courses page uh, and you can buy anything from the courses page. We've got courses of all types here um, from, you know, uh, our, our cheapish, cheapish courses, because we don't sell courses for pennies, but our cheapish courses up to these really big courses at the top. Browse this, buy anything, buy any course, and as soon as you do, you'll get admitted to our Student Hub Facebook group. And that is a place where we've got nearly 6,000 active students out of our 30, 31,000 students at any one time who are there to help you, and it's a private group, and so it's welcoming, and there's none of the usual Facebook rubbish goes on. But more importantly, we go live in there every month with what we call a virtual classroom, and every single answered every single question that gets asked in there gets answered every time without fail so if you like this and you want our attention and you want it guaranteed buy anything and then come and join student hub right we're done here today get good people get out there make the moments and i'll see you in a bit enjoy your easter whatever you're doing if you're celebrating uh, and enjoy your holidays and i'll see you afterwards until then bye bye